We also went through this tensor product of representations. Okay. If you take two irreducible representation and take a tensor product sorry this uh, notation I have to put the circle on it which I did not put. So, the tensor product I explained in the last class right I took a 2 cross 2 matrix another 2 cross 2 matrix and then we did the tensor product. What was the dimension of that matrix? If you had a matrix L alpha cross L alpha and do a tensor product with the matrix L beta cross L beta, this will give you a new matrix with dimension L beta and it will be always a reducible representation. Okay. It will always be a reducible representation. Another way of using this tensor product is that vectors are the fundamental objects in nature observables, fundamental observables. Of course, scalars is also one observable, vectors are the basic observables. So, if you want to look at these tensor products, I said this in the context of saying that you look at x y coordinates of the particle 1 and x y coordinate of the particle 2 that is what I was saying last time right. When I do tensor product of two particle system, I take 2 cross 2 matrix acting on the x y coordinate x 1 y 1 the other one acting on x 2 y 2. So, you can start looking at tensor products and look at what will happen to those reducible representations. How to break this? These are the basis states right. Okay. So, this is what is the and once I do this to start with this one, this one will operate on a L alpha cross 1 basis, this one will operate on a L beta cross 1 basis, this one will act on a ok. So, let me say here it is x 1 x 2 up to x alpha L alpha y 1 y 2 up to y L beta right. What will be this? I said that when you do a tensor product take the first one and multiply everything. So, what will this be? L beta and then x 2 y 1 x 2 y 2 and so on. Okay. That is why it will become okay. So, this is the vector space on which it is L alpha L beta dimensional vector space on which these reducible matrices will act. Okay. Okay. 
So, here what were we doing? We said that there is an S matrix which can it is a reducible representation means that there is an S matrix which will bring it to a block diagonal form. So, this notation summation over alpha technically I should have written it as a summation over direct sum over the vector space. What this means is that you all know by now it will break it up into block diagonal fashion and whose dimension totals up to L beta. Some of them will be a subspace depending on what are the allowed irreps of your group cement. is that right. So, it is like you can take two particle systems okay, and we will do that explicitly and then when you do that the vector space gets bigger and it is a reducible vector space. Finally, I have to because these are like this block diagonal this should also break up into pieces okay, such that each block diagonal suppose this was let us say 2 cross 2 matrix. So, this should have 2 bases. Okay. So, let me call it as some C 1 and C 2. Suppose this was 3 cross 3 suppose then there will be a d 1, d 2, d 3 and so on. So, you break it up into pieces, but what will c 1 be? c 1 will involve it is an S matrix acting on this, because the diagonalization is done by So, which means S when it acts on this what will it do? It will give you some linear combination C 1 should be some linear combination which belongs to this block diagonal and so on right. This is what you will eventually achieve. And what does these blocks mean? I can work with these blocks. I do not need to work with a big matrix, only thing is I need to know them. Clear? So, now we will do an example where this will become clear. Okay. So, gamma alpha cross gamma beta is a reducible representation. And characters of course, when you do a tensor product of two representations it will be the product of the characters this also we verified last time. And remember these uh, you know these uh, identities or from the great orthogonality theorem where we have derived this will give you the multiplicity of an irrep alpha gamma alpha how many times it occurs in the reducible representation. Okay, so, this I will skip for the time being I will come back to this let me get to an example. Okay, so, I have already given you a fact that if you have a reducible representation the dimensionality of these matrices will also determine the dimensionality of the vector space on which these matrices acts. Okay. Besides finding the multiplicity of each irrep, can we find the invariant subspaces? By invariant subspaces, I mean this subspace, this subspace, and so on, okay, and determine these basis vectors. This basis vector is trivial, but I want to find out which linear combination belongs to which irrep. Each one is an irrep, I want to find which linear combination will be an irrep. Clearly, these involves product of two bases, two primary bases. Two primary bases are involved, right? Tensor product. This has one primary basis, this has one primary basis, and this state involves binary basis. Okay? Some linear combination will give me the 
correct binary basis on which the same irreducible representations of these characters will act. Okay. So, we will get to this and we want to understand what linear combination gives you C 1 which belongs to that vector space is the vector space on which this irreducible representation acts that is what we want to understand. It is not new to you, you have done projection operators in your x y z three dimensional space right. Suppose I say that the vector space is three dimensional, let us take x y z. I want to project this to some a times. Okay, so, let me call it as a b c. What is the meaning of this? It has a component a along i hat, b along j hat and c along k hat. This is the meaning of writing it in this column and if I want to find what is the projection operator along x, what is the answer you will get? You have to get a, right. This you know projection operator is basically take a dot product with i, i dot j will be 0, i dot k is 0. So, you will get the projection operator along x direction will give you the component a. How do I do it in the matrix? I just put a matrix. This is the matrix representation for the projection operator in your conventional three dimensional vector space to project you onto the x component. What is the rank of this matrix? It is 1. So, the corresponding non trivial basis which you can find depends on the rank of the matrix. So, that will be one dimensional vector space. This projector will give you a one dimensional vector space. Is that clear? So, similarly you can write just like the way I have explained p x, you can do it for p y on the projection operator which will also be having a rank 1, but it will give you the y component p x multiplied with p y has to be it has to be 0 right one is projecting on to the x component another one is projecting on to the y component. So, projection along x once you have done if you try to do projection along y on that it will be 0 because there is no y component. So, p x p y is 0 p y p x squared will also be p x. Okay. So, those are the properties of your projection operator. Why am I doing this? I want to find a projection operator instead of writing it like this. I want to find a projection operator which when operates on this basis, the projection operator is going to be for different irreps. I want to write it so that I can pull out the C 1 C 2 for a specific irrep projection operator. Just like your x y z are the 3 projection operators which I am going to write p x p y p z. Typically for any group I will have irreps, I want projection operators for each irrep. Okay. Okay, so, I am just proposing a projection operator for a specific irrep gamma alpha, where this depends on the dimensions of that irrep. And as I said, many of these characters could be complex sometimes. So, in general the great orthogonality theorem it is better to use one of them to be a complex conjugate. Okay. So, this is the definition of your projection operator. So, take it as a definition. So, projection for the suppose I want to write what is the projection for P A 1 using this. Let us get to the. Uh, so, let us do this for the conventional permutation of two objects. So, using this uh, expression a 1 is a one dimensional irrep 
So, you will have 1 order of the group is 2 let us do it for the C 2 group ok. Order of the group is 2 and characters are A 1 has character 1 and 1 it is a unit representation. So, let us write that. So, I am not going to write what this gamma reduced is, but let me write this explicitly. What is this going to be? Half of ok. Yeah. What will be the projection operator for A2? No, B1. Why B1? Because the principal axis has negative eigenvalue. So, this will be so the character is 1 and minus 1. So, these are the two projection operators which I could write for a reducible representations and how have I constructed the reducible representation? I have taken some L alpha cross L alpha matrix multiplied with L, L beta cross L beta matrix. So, let us take as a simple exercise. So, let us take B 1 cross B 1. So, if I take this B 1 cross B 1, then I will have, so let us say this is a one dimensional basis, I will have so I will have it to be A B and then I want to do A B ok. What is the definition of B 1 the basis is A on it? What is the meaning of it? What is the meaning B 1 on A the corresponding element the irrep corresponding element which is C 2 on A will be minus of A that is the meaning of this right. So, now you can try and do these projection operators on this and see what you get. Okay. So, it will operate on A B the reducible one and the reducible one is also one cross one matrix only no change right. So, you will find it to be which is a b and uh, this will be a minus and then you will see which one will survive what one which one will survive. Is that right? Whatever I have written it for A, the same thing happens for the B also, right? C2 element on B is minus 1 times B. So, use this fact on this projection operator, right? 
you do that then what you see is that the this tensor reducible representation of C 2 will cancel with the does it cancel or does it not cancel or equivalently what I am saying is if I take B 1 times B 1 it will become characters is also going to be multiplicative right character of B 1 times B 1 is what is that ok. So, I am just trying to see from this that B 1 times B 1 is A 1. So, you cannot get a projection of A B on the B 1 representation, but you can get it on the A 1 representation. Yeah, someone was saying something minus sign, it is fine, yeah, yeah. I am just showing it in a short end notation, technically it is gamma the irrep alpha, which one? Here also it should be a gamma, gamma B 1 cross gamma B 1. This is what I am writing here right. Take one irrep, multiply with another irrep that is all I meant as a short end notice. Yeah. It is a tensor product yeah, did I not put a tensor product? It is tensor product yeah. So, the tensor product will act on a basis which is A B that is all I am trying to say. This is a 1 cross 1 matrix it will act on a basis which is a binary it is not even a basis I should say it is the reducible vector space because just like here it is x 1 and y 1 if it is b 1 it is a one, 1 dimensional vector space 1 dimensional vector space I just take that and the tensor product matrix should operate on that binary component not on the and I am only seeing whether the binary component does it belong to B 1 or does it belong to A 1. You just get only a one dimensional vector space again. I am just trying to argue the characters also multiply. If you just multiply the characters, what do you get characters if you multiply do you get A 1? A 1 B 1 times B 1 will give you A 1. And then you can also show that the projection operator P A 1 on A B will give you plus A B, but P A B V 1 on A B will be 0. This I leave it you to check, please check it, it should happen. So, please check this if in case you have not checked it. So, what does this tell me? that I took the two irreducible representations which are one dimensional, I took the tensor product of those two irreducible representation, it will give me a binary basis ok and that binary basis does it belong to A 1 or does it belong to B 1 is not clear to me. I introduce a projection operator and just blindly apply the projection operator on that binary basis. If it gives me 0 that means, it does not belong to its subspace. If it gives me non 0 and it is a one dimensional, so it gives you just a b. So, this means that this reducible representation turns out to be it is a very simple exercise when it is L alpha is 1 and L beta is 1. It is again one dimensional ok, but I do not know whether this one dimensional is going to be B 1 or A 1 for this two element group there are two possibilities and I am using that projection operator to say that that product element or the product basis which I am going to get it belongs to B 1 and not sorry belongs to A 1 and not B 1 ok. So, 
So, what have I shown here is that the shorthand notation which typically people write is B 1 cross B 1 will give you A 1. Okay. So, the character, so I am not writing gamma subscript B 1, many times they write only the Mullikan symbols. So, if you take product of these two, you will get an A 1 basis. So, the basis of B 1, basis of B 1, if you just put it together, it belongs to A 1 or not to B 1. And another simple way you can see in one dimension is that the product of these characters will be this. So, now you can blindly write A 1 cross B 1 will be what? A 1 cross B 1 is B 1, is that right? So, these are things which A 1 cross A 1 is trivial that is going to be again A 1. Okay. So, if you had a binary basis sorry let us say that the basis was here uh, let me call it a C and here I will say A as the basis. Okay. So, let me call C 1 comma C 2 A 1 comma A 2 are the basis. So, this is the primary basis. binary you can take combinations of C 1 with itself C 2 and C 1 if you multiply C 1 multiplied with C 2 will be what? It belongs to A 1 cross A 1, but you know A 1 cross A 1 is A 1. So, the A 1 will have C 1 C 2 C 1 square these are the possible basis for the binary basis. Similarly, if you come here, what will be the basis binary basis possible? We have already seen that A 1 with B 1 will give you B 1, right. Did we see that A 1 with B 1 is B 1, right. So, can you tell me what will be the basis? You will have A 1 C 1, A 2 C 2 all possibilities, but you cannot have A 1 A 2, you agree? A 1 A 2 can go here, why it can go there? Because B 1 times B 1 is a 1. Clear? Taking the simplest example to explain it to you. 